by radio to make camp. Here they would rendezvous and combine their efforts with another search party out from Little America. While this group was setting up their field operation, back at the Little America base, an intensive search was going forward by air. And then, a radio report. The wreckage of the otter plane plane had been sighted, but it was in a remote and inaccessible spot. And so a helicopter was dispatched. At Little America and at McMurdo, the tension mounted. Today it's a matter of history that the copters returned brought more than good news. For the lost were found. Every man had survived the crash unharmed. And so for a near tragedy, a happy ending. And a happy reunion for the trail party. It was two weeks after the return of the trail party that another tractor train set out from Little America. This was the cash party. Station one, the first stop, was 58 miles east of Little America. These drums of fuel oil will remain here untouched throughout the winter. But with the coming of spring, tractor trains will move out along this trail to begin the construction of bird base, and they will refuel at these way stations. The cash party established two of these fuel supply stations, approximately one day's running time apart. And it was while they were moving on to station number three that the train began to run into difficulty. Although the trail had been thoroughly tested, hidden crevasses were a constant threat. Whenever they were found, they had to be solidly bridged with snow. It was here that tragedy struck. While filling one of these snow bridges, Driver Max Keel, in his D-8 tractor, backed into another crevasse, hidden and unmarked. The tapering walls crushed the cab and instantly killed the driver. It was found impossible to move the tractor or reach the body of the victim. News of the accident was radioed to Little America. Chaplain Bowe was flown to the site. He led the men in prayer and gave a last tribute to Max Keel, peacetime hero. Max Keel was the second task force man to lose his life in the performance of his duty. A few months earlier at McMurdo Sound, Richard Williams had perished when the tractor he was driving broke through the bay ice and sank. <laughs> After the tragic accident, rope lines were rigged to the tractor controls so that no other driver's life might be risked in this dangerous area. Because of the accident, and because the daylight hours were waning now, no further caches were established. On March 10th, just two weeks after their departure, that the cash party returned to Little America. For countless centuries, the seals of McMurdo Sound had led a tranquil, lazy life. But now a plague had come upon the land, and the plague was man. <coughs> Today, 
to the seals, these oversized penguins were much too noisy and far too active. Some tried to ignore the disturbance, while others, in spite of themselves, began to show a certain curiosity. <laughs> 